So that. I'd love to introduce uh, Nora Ixtenda tonight. Um, so if you admit, what, what I have to say, with the Pyrene books and with the subscribers, I then often quite quickly get emails uh, saying, you know, uh, I love the book, or, and I usually get a mix. I get a, I love this book, or then it becomes a very serious email. Mike, I really like Pyrene, I've been a long subscriber. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure about that. So uh, and then I say, don't worry, you will laugh because you love this, you will love the next one, that sort of thing. This one, literally, I have not yet heard, mm -hmm. and I'm being totally honest here, not yet heard, a single person come up to me and say, mm, you know, I'm not so sure. Mm -hmm. um, and here, again, tonight, quite a lot of you just come up with gleaming eyes and say, I really, really love this book. <laughs> so I, I almost feel like I don't need to talk any any longer. I mean, Nora, yeah, she is a star. We did a fantastic event. We were on Latvian national TV yesterday. I'm very terribly worried they'll cut me out at the moment. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, so I won't say anything more. Now, in conversation tonight is uh, Nora will be with uh, Sophie Lewis. Most of the Pyrene books, I had uh, the translations I've edited myself for a very long time. But, you know, because of uh, Pyrene now and so on, I need to delegate. And uh, Sophie Lewis has now worked with me on a couple of books. And um, she is the editor of um, Soviet Milk. And so she knows the book just almost as well as Nora and the translator. So the mm -hmm. two wonderful ladies will be in conversation Welcome, Nora. Welcome, Sophie. Um, we're going to start with a short reading from the beginning of the book to remind you. Will you begin, Nora? Yeah. So okay. thank you, Michael, for me being here. So we had a very nice event yesterday in the Latvian Embassy and also the conversation with Claire Armistead uh, from Guardian Books so and it went quite well so <laughs> and uh, I hope it it will be like that also in London Book Fair in the events in April so mm -hmm. I will read a small excerpt now in Latvian. Es to nevaru atcerēties, kaut gan ir ļaudis, kuri apgalvo, ka apminoties savu piedzimšanu. Visticamāk mātis vēderā es gulēju pareizi, jo dzemdības esot bijušas dabiskas. Ne īpaši garas, ne īsas, ar beigu sāpēm, kas atkārtojās katras piecas minūtes. Mana māte dzemdēja 25 gadu vecumā, tātad jauna un veselīga, kas gan kā noskaidrojās vēlāk īsti neatbildi patiesībai. Bet es atceros, vai varbūt iztēlojos oktobra zeltēnu laigo rēnumu, kas mīs ar garā tumsas laiku priekšnojautām. Tāds robežu mēnesis vismaz šajā klimatiskajā joslā, kur mainās gada laiki un rudens pamazām pāriet ziemā. Tātad kokiem visticamāk bija zeltēnas lapas, ko mūsu mājas pagalmā sodīdamās slaucīja sētniece, kur kopā ar ģimeni bija iebraukusi no Sālēnās Kirgistānas, un par savu augsti kvalificēto darbu tūlīt saņēmusi dzīvokli Mečūri Nielas 20. namā. Viņa šķiba cēnā meitenīte sēdēja uz palodzes, strēva biešu zupu un labprāt aicināja iekšā dzīvoklī. Kādreizējā smierlēku spožums, kuru ēbrēja ģimenes piestā kārtā bija pamatus 1941. gadā, kad deportācijas Sibīrijai viņas paglāba no dzeltnajām zvaigznēm uz muguras, pāris mēnešus vēlāk nacistu okupētajā Rīgā, tātad šis mierlaiku spožums nu bija pakārtots kirgīzietas izpratnēju par skaistumu. Parketu klāja biezi paklāja un porcelāna traukus pildīja salpuķu sēkliņas, bet uz klavērēm bija izvietots pļaujam trauki. Laiki un ticības bija sajaukušies, un tā tas bija visā šai namā, kur mani uznesa 13. dzīvoklī, rūpīgi notītu, kā kūniņu, kā jau tavos, tajos laikos bija pieņemts. So, and before you read the mm. English version, it's just a small comment um, uh, on, on this. So, and I didn't tell it yesterday <laughs> at the conversation. So, um, I was uh, 
28 years old, so and I was written my first novel, Celebration of Life, and I went to uh, to New York. To New York, so I stayed in New York for one year, 1999-2000. So, and uh, the friend of mine who was a mm, uh, um, uh, Canadian Latvian playwright. She liked my novel very much, so and she said, "I will translate some examples." And you are so young, and just you know, just sent to some uh, publishing houses in New York, which was, of course, completely mad thing to do. But <laughs> she she translated the excerpt, so and I was in New York, and I I I sent to some publishing houses with a, without an agent, without anything, so. And then I got a response from Soho Press, which actually is still, and which was a very <coughs> good publishing house in New York, uh, saying from the editor that he wants to meet me. So we met in, uh, in somewhere in Manhattan, so, and then he said, you know, I like these excerpts very much, so, and I think you are talented. But now, can we talk seriously? I said, okay, so. And he said, you will never, ever go in the world with your literature if you will continue to write in Latvian. <laughs> <laughs> you need to stay in America. You need to learn American English very. <laughs> <laughs> you need to switch. You need to write in English. And now, so hopeless. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just have to say. After 20 years. I have to respond to that. I can't, we can't just go on. As an editor and like having worked in, in publishing in the UK with translations for a while, hearing those words makes my skin creep. <laughs> you are so good in your own language. <laughs> so fast, I have no words anymore. That is terrible. Uh, here you are. Exactly. We should find that editor. <laughs> here it is. Okay, shall I read in English? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're, we're starting from the beginning. You may remember. She begins I don't remember 15th of October 1969. There are people who sway, swear they remember their birth. I don't. It's likely that I was well positioned in my mother's room because the birth was normal, not particularly long or particularly short, with the last contractions coming every five minutes. My mother was 25, young and healthy. Her mental state, though, was not so healthy, as I learned later. I do remember, or at least I can picture, the golden tender calm of October, alternating with forebodings of a long period of darkness. It's a kind of boundary month, at least in the climate of this latitude where seasons change slowly and autumn only gradually gives way to winter. Probably, leaves were falling, and our bad-tempered concierge raked them up in the courtyard. She had come from Kyrgyzstan with her family and been allocated a flat in our building at 20 Michurina Street. Her slant-eyed little girl sat on the windowsill, slurping borscht and cheerfully inviting everyone into their home. The pre-war grandeur of the flat had been modified to re reflect the Kyrgyz woman's idea of beauty. The previous inhabitants, a Jewish family, had abandoned the flat in 1941 when deportation to Siberia saved them from having to wear yellow stars on their backs a few months later in Nazi-occupied Riga. Now heavy rugs covered the parquet, the porcelain dishes were filled with sunflower seeds, and spittoons stood on the piano lid. Times and religions had commingled, and that's how it was in the entire building, when I was carefully carried up to the 13th flat swaddled like a chrysalis, as was the custom in those times. Now and then I have a dream from which I awake feeling sick. I'm clinging to my mother's breast and trying to suck on it. The breast is large, full of milk, but I can't get any out. I don't see my mother, she doesn't help me, and I'm left to struggle with her breast on my own. Then suddenly I succeed, and the bitter repulsive liquid spurts into my mouth. I gag and wake with a start. My mother was a young doctor. Perhaps she knew that her milk would have caused more harm than good to her child. How else to explain her disappearance from home immediately after giving birth? She was missing for five days. She returned with aching breasts. Her milk had stopped flowing. 
In despair, my grandmother fed me chamomile tea for two days. Then she went to the infant clinic. The suspicious doctor berated her in Russian and insulted my mother for abandoning me. But eventually he wrote out a note authorizing her to receive infant formula for me. During the 20 years I lived with my mother, I wasn't able to ask her why she'd deprived me of her breast. I wasn't able to because I didn't yet know that she had. And it would have been an inappropriate question because, as it turned out, the role of mother was to become mine. There we are. <laughs> For the first, first short chapter of Soviet Milk. Um, can I just inquire before we begin properly, how many of you have read the book? Wow. <laughs> Quite a full house of books. Okay. Well, that's wonderful. So we won't worry about spoilers, and we'll assume that you remember it fairly well, but you can also request reminders. Um, there's so much in that first chapter that points into the book in so many ways. Um, it's hard to know where to begin, but perhaps, um, perhaps we can talk about these two crucial characters, the mother and the daughter, and the structure of the book, which is essentially a kind of, almost a seesaw of two voices, a two-hander, this book. Um, and I think it's quite unusual as such. The voices alternate rapidly, take over from each other. It's the mother and the daughter, they almost speak to each other. <coughs> How did you plan that? How did that come about? Uh. So actually, I didn't I didn't plan that. So, uh, but uh, my Latvian editor, I have a very good editor uh, for my Latvian books. When I said her that I want to write these two voices, like uh, uh, mother and daughter's daughter voice, uh, uh, she said to me that it is I'm honestly nice. So that is very very difficult. So, and uh, you know, and then I uh, when I was starting to write. I got that feeling that uh, <coughs> uh, these are two different voices. But sometimes it's like a one voice, so, and that's what I actually maybe wanted wanted to invent. That it's a, it's a different voices, but in a way it's a one voice. So, and it worked <coughs> out. So, and I, I just you know I was a little bit confused, and I thought maybe it will be uh, difficult for for the reader to read and to. <coughs> Uh, to, to to understand this difference between the voices, but uh, at the end it turned out that uh, that it was the right way how to tell the story. So, and uh, also there is a, a little bit some 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 glimpses of this mother's mother's or grandma's voice yeah. too. <coughs> yes, and it's like I mean if you are talking uh, about three generations, like mm. mother, daughter, and and mother's mother, it's in a way. It's a it's a three different voices, but in a way it's a one voice. So it's just a story which is you know uh, starting somewhere and continuing and uh, and uh, and continuing and continuing. So and so yeah, that was not a good uh, that was not an easy task. No. But somehow mm -hmm. I, I I I felt that it is a right way how to tell the story. Mm. Yeah, I think I think it functions, and those those two <coughs> opening chapters situate us in the two in the two different times, really. Yeah. Or at least they begin us in two different mm, times, yeah. and we follow them through. And I also saw that it is very. I mean, it is a very personal story, and if you are uh, telling from this first uh, uh, person, yes, it is it is very important because you you don't as a writer also you don't have a place where to hide I mean it's very it's very clear it's very you you are here like on a honest I mean being not on a stage but being very open be, being very honest uh, towards yourself also and I I saw that the only way how I can tell this story is it rare for you to choose the first person to to narrate uh, I'm a third person narrator uh, normally. Uh, I'm, I'm normally a third person narrator okay. Yes, that was new for, mm -hmm. for me, actually. That was new for me. Because I also thought that it is maybe too close and I will be, you know, maybe <coughs> I, I, will, I will be too emotional or, or something. But it turned out that's the right way 
how to okay. tell the story. So, so you have pushed me into asking a question I was going to try and hold back. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have to talk about how, to what degree this is an autobiographical work. Um, because we have to. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. so tell, tell us about how, where you are and, 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 and how it was to write this. I mean, the Mike uh, brought me when this uh, Midas uh, PR agency, who is, uh, they are working for London Book Fair, Hannah Macmillan, so she asked how far she can go to ask me some, you know, <laughs> autobiographical <laughs> questions or so. I was never hiding, and I'm not hiding that it is autobiographical work, so. And, I mean, it's, uh, as Americans say, based on true story but it's I mean it's not it's not uh, only this so uh, this is my in a way this is my mother's story this is uh, my memories about my youth and my childhood but anyway I think it's a, this um, uh, lucky event when as a writer I had such a strong true story behind me but when I started to how to say this kind of a <coughs> psychotherapy thing with myself, remembering what was happening, what was happening with my mother, what was happening in that time in Latvia, all these, you know, historical episodes and so on. So, you know, it was like, um, mm, mm, uh, and it, it went together with all of my, so to say, uh, fictionalized imagination uh, from all the characters, what I put in it, like Serafima and Jesse uh, and uh, and Winston, who who came from 1984. So, and it was like you know, it it was like natural. So, I was like in between of uh, this reality and fiction, uh, real facts and imagination, and it was so natural. It was so natural. So, I just you know, I can't explain. The, the feeling, but it was so natural to put to put things together, so. Wonderful. Um, it's really good to hear that. Um, I think it's more than, I think based on a true story would be to do that in injustice. Yeah. Um, you know, the importance of it and... and <coughs> yeah, because we have, process. we have, yeah. I mean, the difference is, I think, with the, if I can judge, so I cannot judge my, my, my own book, but the difference between, we have so many books in Latvia, like this memoir, m memoir mm -hmm. books, and they are very, very emotional and very, you know, strong books that the people are remembering times and, uh, you know, and, and telling, uh, telling these um, um, memories and so and so, but uh, I think I did it uh, in another way, so yeah. I put it all together, <laughs> so, and that's why that's why maybe this book uh, for, uh, mm, for, for Latvian readership was uh, and is so important because they are also finding, they are kind of uh, lost in, uh, uh, so to say, they, 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 they remember the reality, but they know that it is not uh, only reality, it is, it is more than reality, yes? It's like this glass, uh, mm, uh, glass, thing between reality and, and the fiction, so, and uh, I think it's, it's also very important for them that it is not only reality, but something more than reality. Mm -hmm. yeah. one, one, only one important thing you do <coughs> in the novel is to give a voice to your mother. It's not just your memories of her yeah. all of the time, yeah. it is her thinking. You make sense of, of you give a sense mm. to her thinking, and yeah, this, that's is, right. this is the fiction. Right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's absolutely right. Because, I mean, I, I, when I wrote my first novel, Celebration of Life, it was also this mother-daughter thing. So, and it tells a story how the um, daughter uh, comes to uh, her mother's funeral, and actually they lived separately. So, and she doesn't know anything about her mother, and she meets nine mm -hmm. people. Uh, who are starting to celebrate her mother's life, telling stories about uh, her life. So, and that's how she's getting to know her mother. So, but still, I was, you know, I was telling the stories from this, you know, uh, like I was telling a story 
from my mother's point of view, but here uh, is her own voice. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so it's a major she's step. She's kind of mm -hmm. a she's. A, mm -hmm. Yes. And it's taken you uh, some time to get to this step. Yeah, uh, twenty him. years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well but, done. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I, I, I really, I, I, I really um, think that uh, you can write the good prose after you turn 50. I'm now 48. No, but it's really like this, because I think you need to have a, a experience. You need to have a, this experience, not only life experience, but also experience in language. You need to have this freedom in language. So, And it's not, I mean, it's, it's coming uh, very slowly. So, because writing prose, it's like a marathon. It's not a sprint, so you need to have a strength, and sometimes you you cannot breathe, and sometimes you need to drink water and wine so <laughs> <laughs> to to go to the to the end. So, and uh, I think it took me like yes, I was writing uh, uh, so biography, short stories, everything, but it took twenty years to write this book, and I'm I'm happy that I'm. I succeed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, can we talk about gynecology? <laughs> <laughs> Not to switch <laughs> to <laughs> what terms. <laughs> well, it's interesting, isn't it? It's, it is such a big theme, and it's quite, for me, it was quite an unexpected theme to find in a book like this. Your mother was a doctor, and her, her not just her specialism, but her absolute fascination, her obsession was gynecology. And <coughs> it, and it, the book is about a relationship that isn't really functioning well at all. Um, and so it's very interesting that she's able to treat so many women and <coughs> care for so many women, and yet she struggles in her own relationship, in her own relationship with the life at home. Um, and so many of the motifs in the book are little figures of the figure of the baby in play. Um, I mean, it, it's all very carefully knit together but at the same time it doesn't but it kind of adds up to a fracture or a rupture or something unresolved I mean this is how I'm feeling about it but can you tell us what you think about what she may have given you in terms of thinking about gynecology um, you know I, I remember from my childhood that everywhere where in in our house in our flat everywhere this this the books of uh, the these uh, s scientific books about endocrin endocrinology yeah. and everything and I was you know I, I was getting the feeling like when I was 10 years old I still remember that I, I was thinking about the things that we are all like you know maybe we were born born by chance maybe we it's, I mean, so many people did not, uh, did not get into this world because it's a kind of like, I don't know, maybe it, it's from God, maybe it's a just by chance or something. So, mm. and that's, that's a feeling what I had from all these books and also from, uh, I, I remember my mother's talks to, 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 to her colleagues and so and so and so. And uh, the, the thing what you mentioned, that it is like this, that the doctors and priests and the people who can predict your life, they can help many others, but they, don't, they cannot help themselves. So. Mm -hmm. And that's how it is in this life. I don't know why. So. And uh, that's, that's what happened also with the, uh, with the uh, character in the book. Mm. And also with my mother personally, mm. so that he, she helped so many um, women uh, to have a um, to have children, but she couldn't help herself. So, and that episode about two hundred women coming to the funeral, mm. it mm. is a uh, it is authentic. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it is authentic. Yeah, mm. because I even because my. M my real mother, so she was not working like um, uh, five or six uh, last years of her life, so, and uh, she was not uh, anymore in this, you know, position, and so, and I was so surprised in, uh, on her funeral that so many 
of uh, women came and they were like, you know, she was uh, like a goddess for them. So, mm -hmm. and that's, I think it's, you know, sometimes you, as a writer, you, you, you think that you can uh, imagine things and you can, you know, you can switch on your imagination to write something. But look back in your mm -hmm. own life. There are so many things that you can just uh, tell about. So, and mm. they are real things. So, can you talk about the character of Jesse, who, who is mm. uh, is an intersex person, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. She, I, we call her she. She's more she. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she, she's a patient, but not much is to be done. She's really becomes a friend and a support in the family. Um, and she plays an interesting role in the relationship between mother and daughter. She's kind of a, a fixer. She's, yeah. she's an in-between. She's someone who can bring them together, who tries to. Yeah. What, what do you think? Uh, I think she's a kind of a, kind of a human being full of love and devotion. So, and uh, nevertheless, that she's as you said, intersex, and maybe she will never be the mother, and she, she, she even doesn't know who she is, he or she. <coughs> so she's so full of uh, love and devotion, and she can give it to this main character, yes? And we have a very old um, mm, Latvian uh, song, what we, what we sing on uh, Christmas time, like, Es kaistu ruozīdzīnu, nosī, kas saknītēs. Tā ruozīt, ko es mīnu, no yes es cēlusies. Mm -hmm. And that means like this yes is a kind of maybe Jesus, but not Jesus. It's like yes mm -hmm. So, and this, uh, mm -hmm. this, this rose, was born from Yesa's heart. So, but it's an old version. Yesa is a, like an old version of Jesus. This uh, this uh, rose, what was born from his heart to give a love to people. So, and when I was thinking about this particular character, this Yesa is a kind of a, uh, also coming from this um, uh, G Jesus who gives really a big love to the world so but in another way it's it's not it's not really Jesus so she's so like a mixed up in yeah yeah mm -hmm. but but the main thing is that that she gives a love and devotion and she she can save so she thinks that she can save she's not saving the mother in the book but she thinks that she can save because she have a such big love towards this uh, mother, so mm -hmm. that's the main thing. Mm. One of the uh, sort of subsidiary reasons I enjoyed reading this book was because I learned a fair bit, and it made me realize that I should learn a lot more. Um, and one of the things it made me think about was the odd place of religion in Soviet regime, yeah. Latvia. Mm. The very strange position in which officially we don't talk about it, yeah. it doesn't happen. But in practice, the aura remains, and religious objects, religious people, religious practices retain something more than affection, something more powerful, something more uh, grounding. Yeah. Um, but that mm. that was like I mean that was like about Latvian language. Latvian language was a kind of a kitchen language. I mean, uh, of course there were uh, literature written in in, in in Latvian, but in fifties and sixties it was like you know you needed to hide your own language. I mean mm. because Russian was an official language. Mm. That's why I speak fluent Russian, and it's it's nothing wrong with that because I love Russian language so I divided in from politics yes and and that was uh, the same with religion <coughs> so you that the God was forbidden to go to the church it was not allowed so and I didn't put that in my book but I found my grandma's my um, my father's father's mother <coughs> uh, diaries after she died so and she was a uh, she was a Catholic, so 
from uh, from the special part in Latvia, mm, uh, Latgalia, the very very deep believers, Catholic believers, yes. And when the Russians came, Soviets came, so, and uh, her husband, my grandfather, was deported to Siberia. So she stayed alone with the three small children, so, and she was so afraid from this regime that can you imagine that I found in her diaries that she was writing the God with a big letter, what we, with what we do in Latvian mm -hmm. language. And then she was changing it to the small letter. Like, even if, per, if her, in, in her personal diaries, if somebody will read it, that they see that I'm, I, I, I am changed, so I know that God doesn't exist, even if she was a, she was a very deep believer. <laughs> and, and from these all small episodes, you, you can guess what happened to people, how they, how they needed to change their lives, how they needed to, I mean, to be good for the regime, or maybe even to, to write uh, uh, things to KGB about their neighbors, so, mm -hmm. because they were, they were threats to their lives, to their uh, lives of their children, and, um, and relatives and so and so and so. That was not an easy time, really. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> One way but to put it. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah, something else that I really loved um, was your channeling of a school child's experience. Um, it's a different kind of educational regime than the one I had. Um, but it's clear that educational time is really important to yeah, you. Right. Um, and I wondered what, what, was it a good education? Was it a good enough education that uh, you were able to have under the Soviet regime? Actually, it was a, a I mean, uh, it was a, especially in university, it was a very good education, I should say, really. Because uh, I, when I, I started to, I started to go to Latvian University. I, I started to study Latvian language and literature, and we had a uh, Greek and Latin and uh, and the the, the the world literature and and all, all, all Russian literature and everything. But the most difficult thing in my school was that um, to learn how to live in two parallel and different worlds. Because in, in school, you just knew what you can say and you cannot say. And then you came back to, to your home and then you, you heard all the true stories. So, and then you saw TV and, you, and, if we, and when we are starting to read newspapers and so and so and so, that was a completely <coughs> other world. It was like, because it's uh, this double-faced double -faced personality, yes. Uh, from the other hand, you, uh, from the one hand, you, you, you knew the re reality and truth, and from the other hand, it was just, you know, this propaganda thing, so. And teachers that tried to break through and unify the two halves. Yes. Didn't last, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so it seemed. Yeah. yeah, but but you know, I'm, uh, as I'm always saying, I, I was, uh, lucky enough to be born in 1969 so to have this experience which which makes me actually in a way maybe it, it sounds uh, you know is somehow n not so un understandable but it makes me um, really it, it gives me a strength mm -hmm. to have this experience and then all these times of um, um, of changes when Latvia gained the ind independence again, and, and how we went, I mean, my first uh, travels to, to West, the first uh, country was uh, Norway, so I still remember that. So I, I got to my grandma one banana and one yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, you know, but, but can you imagine, it was the, the, the mm, 1997 or 1996, so. Wow. And and my grandma, she was you know she was living in the first independent Latvia, and and she knew that the good times. So she was traveling <coughs> to Paris Opera, 
to yeah. and everything but but she 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 really she she stayed in Latvia because she was uh, nine months pregnant with my mom so mm -hmm. and she refused to go to Germany mm -hmm. to Sweden and to London because my yeah. that that's a real story that my grandma's uh, brother uh, he emigrated to London and he he did he 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 mm, he lived a very good life in London, but uh, they never allowed my my grandma to come to visit him, even to his funeral. So, mm. Oh, yeah. mm. wow! Uh, that was how it was. Mm -hmm. I still have uh, relatives here <coughs> in London, <coughs> and uh, the, my um, uh, uh, one of uh, one of them. She's she she was working in Times Television or or somewhere so but we are you know we we are having contacts on facebook but we are not so 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 close anymore <laughs> hands up relatives in the audience <laughs> <laughs> no but okay. no, london and also i mean it's not i mean it's it's amazing that that this the mom that my book is uh, has been published here in london because london for us for our family was all these years, like uh, all these years, because of my grandma's um, uh, brother, was like you know the example of this you know Western world. I mean, like this uh, the place, like you know, uh, wonder place or something. <laughs> yes, and also actually for my husband Levan, who is Georgian. So he has a he has a story uh, about London too because he uh, his father uh, in Georgia was a very good uh, translator <coughs> from English into Georgian essayist and uh, philosopher. So and uh, when uh, Levan's mom in 1962 was nine months pregnant with Levan, <laughs> then KGB offered Levan's father to move to London and to start spying <laughs> for Soviet Union wow. because he was speaking very good um, um, English so, mm -hmm. and he refused and instead of being born in London, Levan was born in Tbilisi <laughs> and this is his first time in London. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, I think this is a good moment to say, please ask your questions. Um, we have the first questioner at the back, right there. Go Sorry, listen. always Miss Keane. <laughs> <laughs> Depression is never spoken about openly in the book, um, but for me it comes across very strongly that she's possibly suffering from bipolar, but also postnatal depression. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I just wondered whether you could just comment on that a little. I was very interested in that story because I'm Romanian and my father was Romanian, his younger brother remained in Romanian. He was asked to spy on his younger brother, who remained in Romania, and he refused. And his younger brother always had to leave someone behind. And when his wife died, in order to visit England, and when his wife died, he was allowed to leave his dog behind as security that he would return. So I mean, these things that sound so alien to us are actually very, very true. But anyway, I love the book, and I would just like you just to comment a bit on that depression that's never mentioned. Mm -hmm. And I very much got that it was, I thought, right from the beginning, this is... Yeah, yeah you are right. Or, you are mm -hmm. right. And I think it, it, she realises that she is not living in her cup of tea. So that, that this is, I mean, the, the all things what she is uh, feeling because she's reading in English. So she, she wants to, to, to develop her sentence scientific skills and everything, but it's not allowed, so mm -hmm. she's in this cage. And why is this, you know, very dark, dark uh, pages of this book about this hamster <laughs> eating, <laughs> and eating uh, uh, his babies, but it's, uh, but it, but it is, it is like this, because about this episode, I got so many, I mean, from from the, the very good readers in Latvia, as I said, yes, we love your book, but why? <laughs> 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 this so you very much part of uh, picking <clears throat> up from your point, this postnatal depression, this kind of mm. psychosis. 
that um, it was part of that, the eating of babies, the eating of, it was just a, a psychotic bit of her. Yeah, I think so. Uh, her I think so because was inevitable, she, really, wasn't yeah, it? Because, because she did not, uh, I mean, it was like you, you, you are living your life, but in a way you are not, <clears throat> I mean, you are, uh, you are living your life like on a surface, but it's not your real life. So, yeah. mm -hmm. and and that's why also <coughs> this uh, th th how Winston came into mm -hmm. my novel. Uh, that was a very interesting story actually, because we got the first translation of 1949 in Latvian. Uh, it came out in an exile a Latvian publishing house in Sweden in 50s. So. And then somebody uh, took the book uh, to Soviet Latvia, and then the KGB uh, the, um, uh, took the book, and then they just uh, just they put uh, like what they did with these forbidden books. They uh, how to say they yeah. the removed the cover, mm. not to see the author and not to see the title of the book. Mm -hmm. And can you imagine this woman? Uh, this doctor reading text in Latvia and not knowing anything about 1948 or uh, George Orwell. Mm. But she's reading the text in Latvia and she realizes that she lives in this text. Mm -hmm. Yes, because that's mm -hmm. what the book is about. <coughs> yes. mm -hmm. And that's, I think, that the, the, the many things um, came together. But, uh, but nevertheless, there were people who were surviving quite well on the Soviet regime. So they were just, you know, eating, uh, uh, drinking vodka and champagne and being, you know, in a high positions of uh, communist party and living very good life. And, evening, uh, and even even uh, also they had a contact with the Western world. So they, they, they listened to Western music and they they so they got the full Monty. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was yes, it was different, different uh, life stories. Mm -hmm. Other questions? I think we Quick question: yeah. was, was the poet who was thrown out of the window <coughs> in Yamala? Was that that's an actual poet? Yeah. That you yeah. that was a Latvian poet. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a poet. That's a son of our. Actually, that's a son of uh, our very, very famous poet, Vizma Belshevica, who was the one who was uh, really, in all the years, the very near, nearest to Nobel Prize. Because in the year when the, the uh, Shimborska got the Nobel, Nobel Prize, there were two of them, Vizma Belshevica and Shimborska. So. And then, uh, and, and she was a dissident all of her life. So, and it's it is some kind of um, theory that uh, that that uh, that they thrown up uh, uh, her mm, son, this very talented poet, because of political reasons. So, mm -hmm. we don't we don't know actually, but uh, but 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 there were the people from Moscow staying in the same in a in the same uh, place and and he was very talented he died when i mean tragically died when he was 28 but he was like you know for our generation he was like an idol so mm. and and he still is and he was translating also french literature into latvian very talented and uh, also also a very good poet yeah. mm. I have, uh, we had one just there so I'll hang on my two, two questions one is no use of first names. Mm -hmm. Secondly, no mention of the father. Yeah. <laughs> brief yeah. mention of the father or potential father. No yeah. Brief. Very brief. Mm, very. Mm. Uh, I mean, this uh, the the father of uh, of, uh, of 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 mother. Mm. Yes. Yeah. No, no, the father of the daughter. Ah, father of daughter. Yeah. Father of daughter. Yes. You know, uh, mm, Claire Armistead asked me this question yesterday. <laughs> Uh, do you consider Soviet milk feminist novel? Yes. So, but I'm not. I'm. I'm not because you know. I also. I'm not mentioning also. Uh, uh, in Latvia, they are asked why, why I'm not mentioning my sister in novel because I have sisters. So, uh, but you know, it's uh, sometimes when you have this uh, 
this uh, way how you, you are telling story. There are some um, heroes, they are just not fitting in, so. <laughs> <laughs> what should I say? <laughs> men? And men <laughs> not, not, not particularly men, but, but I mean, but they are just not fitting in, what to do. So. <laughs> But there is, but it is a problem in my novels, so that the women are very strong, so, and they are like... Uh, See, what, but only, it, only a woman would say that. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's no man ever said, I have too many men in this book. Thank you. This is not an attitude that I feel we need to necessarily, you know, worry about too much, but just to point yeah. out, that's a crazy thing you just said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can allow me some crazy yeah. things after uh, talking about the book <laughs> two days non-stop. So. <laughs> no, but I just, you know, uh, somebody asked me, I was in Vilnius Book Fair before London, so, and somebody asked me uh, why the, uh, and in Latvian contemporary prose, it is like this, that there are, um, mm, more female writers who are writing prose, yes? <coughs> why is that? Why is that? Why is that? And why, why it was in the uh, 90s when there was a crisis in literature, so... But I should really say, I mean, I, uh, I, I, I adore, I love men, but in a situation <laughs> of crisis, women are stronger. So. <laughs> no, but really, but really. And, and, and that, was, that was how it was in uh, the end of 90s. So that was a crisis in literature. And what happened? Um, no, e uh, mm, no man uh, uh, was writing the prose. So, and we took it over. So we, we started to write the prose. So that's, uh, I mean, and, and we, are, we, we have a very strong generation of female writers in prose in Latvia, mm -hmm. actually also in Lithuania. So, mm -hmm. And we, we had a very interesting discussion about that in Vilnius so, um, three or four days ago. <laughs> Amazing, I had no idea. Um, but actually, I, because I wanted to ask the same question about the names, mm -hmm. or the lack of names. Yeah. <laughs> lack of names? Yes, yeah, so you don't mm -hmm. name the mother, you don't name the daughter, the grandmother, you n don't, you know, there are yeah. characters, and only the minor characters that you yeah. name. Yes, because I wanted to generalize uh, uh, that. So I wanted to just to, because it's not that particular mother or particular daughter or particular mother's mother. It happened to all of these generations. So, mm -hmm. and it's, I mean, but uh, from the one hand, from the other hand, it's a very essential word. It's like mother, daughter, mm -hmm. mother's mother. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why I, yeah. <laughs> But sometimes you, when you are writing, you are not thinking so deep mm -hmm. about what you are doing. <laughs> so, and then afterwards yeah. comes this, you know, <laughs> waves <laughs> that you, <coughs> and then you realize what you've done. So. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Question here. Uh, I really like the character of the grandmother as well, mm -hmm. and I felt a lot of emotion for her. Um, and I wondered whether, I mean, presumably she, you drew on. Your gran your grandmother. Did your grandmother ever? I, I assume she's not alive anymore. Yeah. But did she know that you wrote? And, that, um, and she was the one who actually, uh, as I said, I got the first copy. Uh, no, I didn't say that. But I got the first copy of my first novel in the day of my mother's funeral. So, but my grandma was still alive. So, and she was, she was. So so happy. So mm -hmm. she she really she was she she always believed that I can write. So and she was the first one uh, to whom I read all of my stories. Mm -hmm. So she was not uh, linked to literature. So she was, uh, uh, you know, she she worked um, mm, she worked in a, some you know state uh, municipality uh, thing and so but. But she was, she, she was adoring <laughs> my writing. And that was a kind of, you know, for me, I, I, I still remember that I didn't have any published uh, story. So I was, I was reading her and she was like, you know, she was so happy. 
So, but but uh, for our generation, it was normal that we are grandmas and grandpas' babies. Mm -hmm. So because mm -hmm. the, the, the parents were so busy, so and also depressed, and uh, sometimes maybe uh, too attracted to alcohol and everything. So really, because uh, because of the times. So. Mm. And we were mm. grandmas and grandpas' babies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, you <coughs> said, you uh, said about Latvian being a kitchen language, which presumably must connect with the writers being being female, if the language has been preserved in a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> that's on the whole a female place. Uh, um, yeah, for me, kitchen is a. You know, it's like a church, so because I, I like to cook very much, so I feel in kitchen, I feel myself very, very good. And <laughs> if they ask me uh, the, the, uh, what, what shall I do if I, I cannot write anymore, so I will, I will be a, a chef. So, yeah, I like to cook. I like, I like it very much. And I think it is a similarity between writing and cooking. You need to know, I mean, because I'm not, I'm not cooking uh, from recipes. I have it in my intuition, so I'm just putting things together. I'm traveling. I'm, I'm taking uh, the things from some international cuisines and so and so. And that's, that's uh, that, uh, absolutely the same thing in language. You need to have this intuition how to put the ingredients mm. together. So I enjoy cooking and writing. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have time for maybe one more. So staying on the food thing. Oh. Um, maybe can we do two because there is a okay. hand there. So we'll do you two, both of you. Um, is the book called Soviet Milk in Latvia? <laughs> no. Okay. It can translate as mother's milk. You're allowed to tell the story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the story. The story started here in this right. house okay. <laughs> because I came uh, last uh, April for the final editing of the book uh, with Mike. So. And then Mike said to me, but you need to still think about, we need to change the title. And why I was really upset. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and she said, no, we need to change the title. So, and then I was, remember, I was going out to your house and I was turned around and I said, okay then call it Soviet mill. <laughs> 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 and then Mike was like, Okay, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> and then she she sent the the, the title to the uh, the people uh, bookshops bookshops. So and they all agreed. That's <laughs> that's a title. Oh. So mm -hmm. and I I never regret that uh, that I changed this title for um, uh, for for English version. Mm -hmm. So and also Italian. I I in March I'm going to my Italian tour because the book came out in Italia. So and they wanted to change the title, and afterwards they they kept the il latte della madre, <laughs> like uh, mother's milk. But oh, it's, but but I think, but actually Soviet milk, it is what it the oh, book yes. is about. Yes. Yes. It is yes. poisoned yes. milk. Yeah. But you, I mean, and I th I think I I, I think that. Great, make it. It happened. <laughs> <laughs> In our defence, <laughs> Mother's Milk. I mean, there, there's a very famous book. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, and it's it's just turned into a film. And it was actually, I think, Sophie pointing that out. Though it's been now just made into a film. Just one of those things. You can't and really step on the, um, the from the, you know, it would have looked, it look, would have looked silly. But you know, and and when when we got this news about uh, the, the in Latvia about the Soviet Soviet milk, so then there were also the people were saying, "Wow, that's a great title." Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great. That's good to know. <laughs> they, didn't, they, they didn't tell me. Ah, okay, you changed the title yeah. to go in the British market. <laughs> Yeah. Worse, worse has happened. <laughs> <laughs> Much more drastic title changes have been known to happen <laughs> yeah. between 
anywhere else and England or, or America. Uh, you know, this is, this is fairly close, yeah. in fact. And uh, so before we will start this uh, last... We have one more oh, question. Yeah. Just yeah. the last just question. Just a quick one that builds on that uh, to some extent. Um, presumably this is a story that could have, in theory, been written in Lithuania or Estonia or Georgia or Armenia or Kazakhstan and so on. Because of, uh, because it's called Soviet milk and the influence uh, thereby, um, is there anything that we wouldn't read in the book that is makes it distinctively Latvian? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so I I don't know actually it is, uh, but but it is it is in a way it is a uh, also very Latvian book. Because the, the, because all of the, I mean the, the history is common. The history yes. is common from all these uh, all these countries, and I don't know why it why it why it happened. I mean why 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 I wrote this book, and because because we had similar stories also from contemporary like Lithuanian and uh, and this, uh, and uh, uh, and Estonian literature, but I think what makes it a, a little bit special, I think, also it's this uh, mother-daughter story, this mm -hmm. human, human kind story, and it is not particularly Latvian. It's it's just it's just a common thing. So, what you can read in all, all cultures, all 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 literatures. Ah, and a special thing from Latvia, mushrooms. <laughs> Picking up mushrooms. <laughs> That's what we talked with uh, with Richard today. Yes, we are crazy mushrooms. <laughs> we are going answer. to stop you there because I think <laughs> I should wrap up. Yeah. Um, because we could talk about mushrooms for quite a while. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's lovely. For hours. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but I think it's you're right. It's a good point to finish with. It's there's a there's a very strong mushroom picking culture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. um, I'm but going to read, and then you will finish. Yes, yeah? and before the reading, I want to thank you from all of my heart, Maike and Sophia, because they worked so hard on a translation of this book to get in in shape and to to have the the best version of translation. And I'm I'm really really thank thankful to you. I don't remember the 22nd of October, 1944, but I can reconstruct it. Riga has been liberated from the Nazis. Bombs have shattered the maternity ward's windows. It is damp and cold, and the women who have just given birth helplessly wrap themselves in their bloodied sheets. Exhausted nurses and doctors are bundling up dead newborns and drinking as they work. An epidemic that everyone is calling nasal typhoid fever is raging through the hospital. Sounds of wailing bombs whistling in the air, and through the windows, the smell of burning. My mother has sneaked me out of the ward, bound to her chest, and is squirting her milk into my nose. Pus, milk, and blood together drip from my tiny nose. I gag and breathe, gag and breathe. Then there's silence. A horse pulls a wagon on a sunny autumnal road from Riga to Babiti in the outskirts. My father stops several times to allow my mother to feed me. I no longer gag, but breathe calmly and greedily suck my mother's milk. In the Babiti forest district, we have a lovely house, barely furnished and without a cradle, but my mother makes up a bed for me in a suitcase. Each morning, my, my father inspects his young spruce trees. That's what happens until Christmas, when a heavy lorry full of soldiers roars in. They shout in a language my parents don't understand, then jump out and begin to fell the young spruce trees. My father locks my mother and me in the back room, where she hides me in the suitcase with holes pierced in it so I can breathe. My father runs out of the house yelling bastards, scoundrels, and trying to save his spruce trees. The soldiers beat him until he bleeds and throw him into the lorry with the hewn trees. Then they search the house, banging at all the doors. Holding her breath, my mother crouches in a wardrobe in the locked room, holding the suitcase with me inside it on her knees. The soldiers are ransacking the house. The noise is horrendous. Finally, all grows quiet and we listen to the sound of the engine as they drive away. 
Towards morning, my mother climbs out of the wardrobe. She feeds me, ties me to herself, dresses warmly, and heads back to Riga on foot. It is late evening when we arrive at our flat on Tomsona Street, soon to be renamed Maturina Street. My mother is exhausted, but she still has to tape over the windows shattered by bombs during an air raid. Otherwise, we would both freeze. Tūkstoši Skan raudis un vaimanas gaisā so bumbas un pologiem iekšānā degums maka. Māte ir izzagusi mani no jaunzimušo telpes, pietinusi sev klāt un slāc no degunā savu pienu. No mana deguntiņa nāk strutu piena un asiņu maisījums. Es rīstos un elpoju. Rīstos un elpoju. Tieši. Tieši.